Hello everybody, my name is Andrew and today let's try to figure out how much we can make for your left kidney. First of all, shout out to my main man Chris, who is the winner of our little stock guessing game. As you can see, Chris is already rocking his winner t-shirt. Yeah, my boy, blow. Yeah, my boy. And now the side hustles. Yes, the cornerstone of every financial channel on YouTube. Actually, I had made a note to myself to make a video on side hustles long before I even started this channel. Well, what can I say? Overthinking at its finest. Let's start with acknowledging the fact that we are going to talk about side hustles, assuming that you already have a center hustle, whether it's a full-time job, a long-term project, your studies, or 10 other side hustles that it might be time to finally consolidate or at least drop some of them. Because time is money and money is time. Yeah, but you cannot buy yourself a time machine. Well, what would you need a time machine for? To go back and redo those three dollar surveys on crackers? Don't be silly. We trade our time for money and use money to live a little. And unless you are in complete deep shit that you need to get out of it at all costs, your focus should be to find a healthy balance between a life at work and a life under a bridge. There is also a cheat code that allows you to trade your skills and your expertise and your brand for money, but that's a topic for another time. The first thing you gotta do before you even start thinking which side hustle to try out is to give a very good thought to what you actually need that extra money for. Not more cash won't hurt, but actually laying down your short and long-term goals. This is going to be your light at the end of the tunnel to keep you focused and motivated. Without having those in mind, you won't get too far. The more money you'll be making, the more of it will be slipping through the cracks. Especially with all those, ooh, I've made a hundred bucks today, let me treat myself to some red lobster. And thus, all the sweat and tears will be spent just to feed on some over cooked bottom feeder that you will get out a couple of hours later. Dude, then you need to dive into your finances. Look through your bank statements, your credit card statements, your PayPal and your Amazon order history. You are looking for fees, order charges and all of the random things that you've been treating yourself to. I guarantee there is always something to cut down on. Close that dumb Bank of America account, charging you 10 bucks of monthly maintenance fees. Cancel the New Yorker subscription, you know you're not reading that. Switch from T-Mobile to Mint Mobile, link in the description. And of course, call Allstate and tell them to go f*** themselves. Hmm, maybe I'll make a video with some other saving tips and it will appear here. Maybe not. Honestly, plugging those leaks is no different than a side hustle, because you end up with more money in your wallet. But there is going to be a limit of how much you are able to downsize your life to, and beyond this point is just hot pockets and misery. And that's when you gotta start a hustle, baby. That's right, we're almost 3 minutes in and we're just getting to the juicy part. I'll break down the side hustles into four categories, include some examples, and hopefully this video will give you some inspiration and spark some ideas of your own. Providing a service, in my humble opinion, is perfect to start with for everyone. Usually it doesn't require much investment up front, you don't have physical inventory that you need to store somewhere, and your money is not tied into it. You can start it fast and wrap it up if needed just like that. What are we talking about? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is definitely photography. I don't even mean the rather saturated world of wedding photography. It is a beast of its own. I personally know a couple of people who have turned this into a very profitable business. But messing with people's special moments in life, whether it's a wedding or engagement, is not as easy as it seems. Often people expect of you miracles on a very, very tight budget. So the gig does involve a great dose of commitment as expectations are high. Instead, you can start with baby showers, family reunions, birthday parties, baptism parties, yearbooks, school plays, school sports, you get the point. There are of course other avenues to make money with your camera with less at stake. 
For instance, the now very popular real estate photography. You can build a business around that alone. Though, depending on your location, the competition can be already pretty tough. Then, how about helping out your local businesses? Airbnbs, cafes, galleries, pizza parlors, bars, barber shops, candy stores. Now we're talking. Today, every successful business needs online presence, and successful online presence relies heavily on good visuals. So, the demand is undoubtedly there. Also, don't forget about video. Again, not even videography for weddings. Creating music videos for local artists, hmm, commercials for businesses, yes, good, but if you're not feeling comfortable letting your creativity lose just yet, how about documenting local events? No, not hitting Coachella right away. Start small. Ideally with just one business involved, so you know whom to ask to write you a check. Product launches, art shows, golf tournaments, expos, charity events, just to name a few. Guys, here's a full-blown business idea for you. Producing company videos. Yes, as a brand strategist in my professional life, I have seen a ton of those. And <laughs> believe me, the bar is set well, it's not even set, it's just rotting away right on the ground. If a bride is expecting to see Avatar, a business will pat you on the back for directing the room. Facts. Anyways, if you are interested, maybe I could do a separate video with, say, 50 ways how to make money with your camera. But now, not to bore half of the viewers, let's just move on to a classic side hustle, and that is becoming a tutor. No, you don't need a degree from MIT to make money teaching physics. Even as a high schooler, you can teach your fellow kids what you are good at. Math, chemistry, biology, history or English. You can teach guitar or piano, to sing or to dance. You can teach a foreign language if you know one. Sometimes kids' parents wouldn't mind some help in understanding what all those Insta tweets are all about and how to create an account for their local little donut shop or whatever. The current circumstances, by the way, are just perfect for rocking these remotely from the comforts of your own air mattress. I think the best way to create a side hustle in services for yourself is to find a tool and provide a service around that. Bear with me for a second. The beauty of it is that it doesn't have to be a nano-mechanical tester for 100k. Think of a tool that is not very versatile, but for a very specific use. Something not too pricey, yet normal people don't have enough use for to justify the purchase, especially if it's bulky and just takes too much space. Something that people might be okay with paying one-third of the purchase price just to get the job done once in a very while. <laughs> Sounds like a riddle, doesn't it? Well, that's the thing. You need to figure out what works for you, for your skills, for your area. Maybe it's a tool that you already own, or your parents already own, or your friend's dad doesn't use anymore. For example, if there is a thriving art community in your town, especially with many ceramics artists, you might get yourself a ceramics kiln and offer your local ceramist to complete their projects in it for a reasonable pay. Or maybe get yourself a mighty saw and turn your garage or even your balcony into an art framing shop. So, a hundred bucks and you are in business. Here's another one. I know a treasure hunting enthusiast who owns a metal detector and, especially on weekends, gets calls from people desperate for help in finding a lost gold ring or a necklace on the beach. His thing is that he charges them only if he finds the item, so people don't hesitate to reach out to him. And that is brilliant, because often, even if he fails, the clients still appreciate the help from the stranger and sometimes just pay for the services anyways. No? Hmm. How about getting a thermal imaging camera? and helping homeowners detect heat loss in their houses or maybe water leaks. Can you make money doing that? Hell yeah! Are you going to? Are you? Many people own a good drone. 
you might as well. Why not find a gig? Yes, of course, the real estate. But again, local or school events, like a marathon or a rowing race, a 360 camera. It might be considered by many as a gimmick, but your local pumpkin farm or yacht club or vineyard might be intrigued, especially if you learn to and offer to integrate it into their website. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. Believe it or not, you are capable of creating something other people will be willingly saying goodbye to their money for. You will hear a lot of suggestions to create a digital product, like an ebook, a course, or a Lightroom presets pack. And that is truly amazing to put in work just once and get paid over and over and over again. But realistically, if you don't have an audience and you are not yet a masterful marketer, it will take a lot of effort and time to get this ball rolling. Creating a physical product, on the other hand, and getting it out there into the wild on your own will allow you to see the results of your work right away. Here's an example. I used to know a young couple who would wake up very, very early, make a lot of delicious sandwiches, and in the morning rush hour on a very busy urban intersection, sell them out instantaneously from a teeny tiny kiosk before going to their full-time jobs. Some people, whom I didn't personally know, chose to go into offices at lunchtime and sell out their goodies that way. And corpo people, they just loved it. Um, Certainly, your product doesn't have to be food-related. Homemade candles and bath bombs and soaps are very popular. Some restless hustlers grab used coffee grounds from a coffee shop across the street to make a fancy body scrub. Depending on your skill set, you can build tables, chairs or those big-ass concrete garden pots. Some people are willing to pay for custom Christmas or Halloween decorations to shame their neighbors, lame Walmart inflatable penguins. Custom Halloween costumes are an option as well. And then, look at this handsome gent. Yeah, I know what you think. Damn, that bow tie is slick as fuck. Well, thank you, thank you. I've made that myself for my own wedding. And so can you. Matter of fact, Anything labeled wedding goes for extra extra. Accessories, table decorations, flowers, gifts, make it personalized and it might be a gold mine. Listen, if making anything pretty makes you question your own sexuality, you might consider creating projects just for the groom. Or get your girlfriend on board so you can hide from your fellas the fact that you actually enjoy creating those floral compositions for special occasions. If you have connections or you want to address your anxiety and go talk to strangers, you can actually get your products into your local stores. But of course, Etsy and farmers markets and Facebook marketplace often works for many as well. You do need to figure out what works for you, but don't overthink this. It doesn't have to be a million dollar startup idea. Start with something proven to work and take it from there. Getting stuff for cheap and selling it for profit must be as old as the human race. It's an art form, dividing people into those who will sell anything and those who will buy any sh**. I think if it's in you, you already know. But just in case you woke up from a coma, let's brush up on some basics. Obviously, the big part of it is in understanding when a deal is a steal. For that, you have to trade what you know. If you are into watches, for instance, you should have a pretty good understanding of the prices, what similar products go for, used or new, if there is demand for it. And watches are indeed a very good example because we constantly see outrageous discounts and it might be very easy to be fooled into thinking that you are getting a deal of the century. I mean, look at that. 
Don't you want to become an instant millionaire flipping these? Deals are definitely out there. You just need to know where to look for them. Bidding on a C storage unit might be an overkill, but flea markets, garage sales, thrift stores are a very good place to start. So are uh, seasonal sales and clearance sections, especially if you can wait until the prices go up and especially if you do know that they will. You can ask your family and friends if there's something that they don't want anymore and they would like to maybe sell to you. And at the end of the day, there's always Facebook and Craigslist and the free stuff right on the curb. If you have access to a truck, you can help people get rid of their big appliances and furniture. Clean it, paint it, restore it, repair it, but always be mindful of the time you spend versus the potential benefits. Don't forget about the fees, taxes, shipping costs, the time it takes to create a listing, take photos, write a description, answer questions, meet with the buyers, and so on. So next time you see sick kicks in Ross Dress for Less and think to yourself, I can definitely flip that on eBay. Well, you might be better off just not buying a bottle of booze later that evening instead. The best way, in my opinion, to go about those opportunities is to simply think of them in terms of hourly pay. That's when you realize that very often accepting maybe two worse low ball offers from Grubhub you can be done with in about an hour will make you more. So this flip just doesn't make any sense. Personally, I am not much of a flipper, mostly because I am not able to actively look for good deals and the ones that I stumble upon from time to time are not really worth it. Take for instance this seemingly crazy deal from B&H, one plus seven for 300 bucks, 50% off, let's do it, right? But then you check out eBay and take into account eBay fees and PayPal fees and shipping and packaging and dropping it off and possibly refund. Refund? Easy, 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 Refund. Refund. Man, with the current stock prices, I know a better way to spend those $300. I mean, check this out. You go to your Robinhood account, okay? You hit Tesla, you hit trade, buy, and then 300, and then review, and then swipey, swipey, and that's it. Well, the market is closed right now, but the order is going to be executed in the morning. And you see, just tap, 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 and I'm pretty sure I can expect similar results. Even if it's less, I've spent, what, 15 seconds, and I can just go about my day, go play with a kid, or play the guitar, or edit this YouTube video. Of course, I do realize how lucky I am to be in this position where I don't really have to chase those extra 30 bucks. And that's why I repeat over and over and over again that all of that you have to apply to your life, to your pocket, and always be mindful of your own ROI. Unless, of course, it's passion or charity, then yeah, whatever. And finally, the last category is what I call apps hustle. We live in unbelievably exciting times where we redefine everything, including work. There are now so many apps that will allow you to work for yourself, create your own schedule, but most importantly, give you choice. DoorDash, Uber, Uber Eats, Turo, Airbnb, Grubhub, Postmates, TaskRabbit, Instacart, Fiverr, Upwork, and so on. Of course, each one of them has its own perks and drawbacks, but for the love of God, they give you a choice. And also, as a bonus, they tremendously help you out in evaluating all those other side hustles and even your full-time job. Because now you have a point of reference. And now looking at those kicks in Ross that you wanted to flip, you can go, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. I'm hopping into my car on this beautiful summer evening and I'm cruising around the city with my windows down and music up doing some deliveries. Honestly, just try it. Get yourself an old Civic Hybrid with 38 MPG like mine so you don't even bother about your car expenses and just go. Thank you for sticking to the end. I really hope this video has given you some ideas if you're going to use some. 
please let me know i'm really curious as always subscribe some referral links in the description and clickbait you next time cześć